Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson, and I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower, and we use words and phrases, especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, Dan Novak tells us about the recovery of a small container of very radioactive material in Australia. Brian Lynn presents this week's technology report. We close with the next part of our U.S. history series. But first, here is Dan Novak. Australian officials on Wednesday. Recovered a powerfully radioactive container that was lost in the desert. Officials said a team found the small container, or capsule, after days of searching, involving about 100 people along 1,400 kilometers of highway. The capsule is smaller than a coin, a piece of metal money. The capsule contained cesium-137, a highly radioactive material. It was lost while being transported more than two weeks ago. A vehicle equipped with special detection equipment picked up the radiation from the capsule, officials from the state of Western Australia said. The search team then used smaller detection equipment to find the capsule itself. It was about two meters from the side of the road in an area far from any community. Officials added. The mining company Rio Tinto used the radioactive capsule to measure the density of iron ore in the Gudadari mine in the Australian state's remote Kimberley area. Rio Tinto was sending the capsule to a centre near the state capital, Perth. The distance from Kimberley to Perth is greater than the length of the island of Great Britain. Simon Trott, the head of iron ore for Rio Tinto, said the company would pay for the cost of the search if asked by the state government. We are sorry that that has occurred, and we're sorry for the concern that that has caused within the Western Australian community, he said. Australians had been told to stay at least five meters away if they saw the capsule. Exposure to radiation could cause radiation burns or sickness, but driving past was said to be low risk. Western Australia's emergency services minister Stephen Dawson said the discovery was an extraordinary result. The search involved the state's emergency response department, defense officials, and radiation experts. People are not permitted to go within 20 meters of the capsule, while defense officials confirm it through a serial number. It will then be placed in a lead container, and kept in a secure place in Newman. Newman is a town about 1,200 kilometers. Northwest of Perth, it will be taken to the state capital on Thursday. The capsule is only six millimeters across and eight millimeters long, but it contains cesium-137. The small amount can release radiation equal to ten X-rays every hour. Officials said the capsule fell off a truck. And landed on the side of the road. Officials added that it was unlikely contamination in the area would be a problem. Rio Tinto said in a statement that it would investigate whether it should have hired specialist contractors. SGS Australia prepared the capsule, and Centurion transported it. Centurion said it is investigating. How the capsule fell off the truck. The container provided by SGS arrived in Perth in the same condition in which it was sent. Technical GPS information 
showed the truck did not suddenly change speed. Western Australia's chief health officer Andrew Robertson said there would be an investigation. He said officials would consider charges under the state's radiation safety laws from 1975. The highest fine for failing to safely deal with radioactive substances is about seven hundred dollars. The state government said on Wednesday it was considering a change to permit bigger fines, but officials said they may not use new laws against Rio Tinto for this incident. This week, Google researchers published a paper describing results from an artificial intelligence AI tool built to create music. The tool, called Music LM, is not the first AI music tool to launch, but the examples Google provides demonstrate musical creative ability. Based on a limited set of descriptive words, AI shows how complex computer systems have been trained to behave in human-like ways. Tools like ChatGPT can quickly produce or generate written documents that compare well with the work by humans. ChatGPT. And similar systems require powerful computers to operate complex machine learning models. The San Francisco-based company OpenAI launched ChatGPT late last year. Developers train such systems on huge amounts of data to learn methods for recreating different forms of content. For example, computer-generated content could include written material, design elements, art, or music. ChatGPT has recently received a lot of attention for its ability to generate complex writings and other content from just a simple description in natural language. Google engineers explain the Music LM system this way: First, a user comes up with a word or words that describe the kind of music they want the tool to create. For example, a user could enter this short phrase into the system: a continuous calming violin backed by a soft guitar sound. The descriptions entered can include different music styles, instruments, or other existing sounds. Several different music examples produced by Music LM were published online. Some of the generated music came from just one or two word descriptions, such as jazz, rock, or techno. The system created other examples from more detailed descriptions containing whole sentences. In one example, Google researchers include these instructions to Music LM: the main soundtrack of an arcade game. It is fast-paced and upbeat, with a catchy electric guitar riff. The music is repetitive and easy to remember, but with unexpected sounds. In the resulting recording, the music seems to keep very close to the description. The team said that the more detailed the description is, the better the system can attempt to produce it. The music LM model operates similarly to the machine learning systems used by ChatGPT. Such tools can produce human-like results because they are trained on huge amounts of data. Many different materials are fed into the systems to permit them to learn complex skills to create realistic works. In addition to generating new music from written descriptions, 
The team said the system can also create examples based on a person's own singing, humming, whistling, or playing an instrument. The researchers said the tool produces high-quality music over several minutes, while being faithful to the text conditioning signal. At this time, the Google team has not released the Music LM models for public use. This differs from ChatGPT, which was made available online for users to experiment with in November. However, Google announced it was releasing a high-quality dataset of more than 5,500 music writing pairs. Prepared by professional musicians called music caps, the researchers took that step to assist in the development of other AI music generators. The music LM researchers said they believe they have designed a new tool to help anyone quickly and easily create high-quality music selections. However, the team said it also recognizes some risks linked to the machine learning process. One of the biggest issues the researchers identified was biases present in the training data. A bias might be including too much of one side and not enough of the other. The researchers said this raises a question about appropriateness for music generation for cultures underrepresented in the training data. The team said it plans to continue to study any system results that could be considered cultural appropriation. The goal would be to limit biases through more development and testing. In addition, the researchers said they plan to keep improving the system to include lyrics generation, text conditioning, and better voice and music quality. I'm Brian Lynn. You just heard Brian Lynn present this week's technology report. Brian is here now to talk more about the story. Hi, Brian. Thanks for joining me. Sure, you're welcome, Ashley. In today's report, you explored a new artificial intelligence tool developed by Google researchers, and we learned that the tool can create a range of different kinds of music all by itself. We are hearing more and more about new AI systems being developed. And I know last week's report also included a discussion of the Chat GPT tool. Are these two systems at all similar? Yes, Ashley. Actually, they are. Chat GPT is known for being able to produce complex pieces of writing based on a user entering short text descriptions into the system, and Google's new music generator called Music LM works in a similar way. The researchers released examples online of music pieces, and some of those pieces were generated from one-word descriptions of a certain style of music. Okay, and I know you said in the report that Google's AI music generator is not yet available to the public to try. Why is that? Right, Ashley. Well, in a paper released online explaining the team's development process, Google said it was not ready to have people start experimenting with the system just yet. The main reason it gave for this is because the team knows there are certain biases that can be generated by the tool. These kinds of biases, the researchers said. Raise questions about whether the music being generated might underrepresent some cultures. And did the team say when Music LM might be available for users to try themselves? So far, the company has not set a release date.、Um, in the paper, the researchers say 
They now plan on improving many parts of the system, including the planned addition of lyrics generation too, as well as trying to address the issues with cultural appropriation. Okay, thanks again, Brian, for joining me today on the program. You're welcome. Thank you, Ashley. And now we present the making of a nation. The American nation began to expand west during the middle 1800s. People settled in the great open areas of the Dakotas, Utah, Wyoming, and California. The movement forced the nation to deal with great tribes of Native American Indians. The Indians had lived in the Western territories for hundreds of years. Settlers and cattle ranchers pushed the Indians out of their homelands. The result was a series of wars between the tribes and the federal government. At first, the United States government had just one policy to deal with the Indians. It was brutal. Whenever settlers wanted Indian land, the tribes were pushed farther west. If the Indians protested or tried to defend their land, they were destroyed with crushing force. By the middle 1800s, almost all the eastern Indians had been moved west of the Mississippi River. They were given land in Indian Territory in what is now the state of Oklahoma. The government described these Indians as civilized. This meant they were too weak to cause more trouble. Many agreed to follow the ways of the United States government. The Indians of the western grasslands were different. They refused to give up their way of life. These Plains Indians were always on the move because they hunted buffalo, the American bison. They followed great groups of the animals across the grassy plains. At that time, there were millions of these animals in the American West. The Indians of the Plains depended on the buffalo for almost everything they needed. Many of them were fierce fighters. The Plains Indians did not want settlers crossing their hunting lands. They often tried to destroy the wagon trains carrying settlers to California and Oregon. The United States Army was given the job of keeping peace. Soldiers were sent to build roads and forts in the western plains. They tried to protect the wagon trains from Indian attacks. They tried to keep settlers from invading Indian lands. There were many fights between the soldiers and the Plains Indians. The soldiers had more powerful weapons. They usually won. Some Plains Indians tried to live peacefully with the settlers. One such group was part of the Sioux tribe called Santisu. It was the largest and most powerful group in the West. The Santisu lived along the northeastern edge of the Great Plains in what is now the state of Minnesota. They signed treaties with the government, giving up 90% of their land. The Santee agreed to live in a small area. In exchange, the United States agreed to make yearly payments to the tribe. This made it possible for the Indians to buy food and other things from traders. Trouble started, however, in the summer of 1862. 
the government was late giving the Indians their yearly payment. As a result, the Indians lacked the money to buy food. Traders refused to give the Indians credit to buy food. One trader said, If they are hungry, let them eat grass. The Indians were hungry. Soon their hunger turned to anger. Finally, the local Indian chief called his men together. He gave the orders for war. Early the next morning, the tribe attacked the trading stores. Many of the traders were killed, including the man who had insulted the Indians. He was found with his mouth filled with grass. The governor of Minnesota sent a force of state soldiers to stop the Indian revolt. The soldiers had artillery. They killed several hundred Indians in battle. They hanged several others. Soon the revolt was over. Trouble came next to parts of Colorado and Wyoming. This is where the Sioux Indians and the Cheyenne Indians lived. The chief of the Lakota Sioux tribe was named Red Cloud. The Indians fought bitterly to keep settlers out of their hunting grounds. After two years of fighting, with many deaths on both sides, the government decided the struggle was too costly. It asked for peace. The Sioux and the Cheyenne agreed. They were given a large area of land north of Wyoming in the Dakota Territory. They also were given the right to use their old hunting lands farther north. The government agreed to close a road used by settlers to cross the hunting grounds. And all soldiers were withdrawn from Sioux country. The war ended, and peace came to the Sioux and the Cheyenne. With peace came a new United States policy towards Indians of the West. The government decided to put aside an area of land for each tribe. The land was called a reservation. Each tribe would live on its own reservation. Most of the reservations were in Indian Territory in what is now the state of Oklahoma. Other reservations were in Dakota near the land of the Sioux. The government believed it would cost less money and fewer lives to keep Indians on reservations. The Indians would be away from possible trouble with settlers. Instead of moving freely over the plains to hunt buffalo, the Indians would live in one place. They would receive food and money from the government. Officials came from Washington to explain this new policy to the Indians. A big meeting was held. Chiefs representing many tribes attended. The chiefs spoke one after another to the government officials. All of the chiefs said they too wished to live in peace with the United States government. But many questioned the decision to move to reservations. One who did so was Chief Ten Bears of the Comanche tribe. He said, There are things which you have said to me that I do not like. You said you wanted to put us on a reservation. You said you would build houses for us. I do not want your houses. I was born on the plains where the wind blows free, 
and there is nothing to break the light of the sun. I was born where everything breathed a free breath. I want to die there, not within walls. So the government and the Indians reached a compromise. The tribes were given reservations in Indian territory, but they were also given permission to hunt buffalo in a wide area south of the reservations. The Indians agreed to give up all their old lands. They agreed to live in peace on the reservations. In exchange, the United States promised to give the Indians all the food, clothing, and other things they needed. It also promised to give them schools and medical care. The Indians were not happy with this agreement. They did not want to give up their old ways of living. However, they saw they had no choice. The government was too strong. They waited weeks, then months, for help to move to the new reservations. They could not understand the delay in carrying out the agreement. The delay was in Washington, D.C. Congress could not agree on how much money to spend on the Indians. So the lawmakers refused to approve the agreement. They left the situation unsettled. Again, Indians were forced to watch angrily as settlers began moving on to lands they had agreed to give up. As the settlers moved in, the buffalo and other animals left. The Indians had difficulty finding food. Soldiers shared their food with the Indians. It was not enough. Western officials sent urgent messages to Washington asking for supplies for the Indians. No supplies could be sent until Congress approved the money to buy them. As before, some of the Indians became angry and refused to wait any longer. Their anger led to new fighting. In the end, it was a fight that failed to win back their land. 